Howdy folks, welcome to part two of our mini game programming series thingy here. And before we get started, I just wanted to show you something quick. Uh, you don't have to worry about the actual code that I put in. I'll just explain to you what's going on. I just want to show you something real quick. So what I did was I made basically added copied this code over so that we can um, have it paint directly onto the form. I, I was trying to show you how to do that yesterday. And so I did do that and I want to show you why basically you don't want you don't want to do that. And the reason is once it compiles here is this. So when you when you draw directly onto it, it's you know you catch it in progress you catch it in the active so if we make this bigger if we make each square bigger um it's, it gets even more obvious i think so yeah the, basically if you do that you end up with these weird you know you can see it refreshing and everything it's drawn in front of your face so what you do instead is you draw onto a bitmap here and then when once it's actually done with the bitmap it just flips the whole thing onto there at once. So that's in 3D rendering, that's what they call a back buffer. And I just wanted to show you that, and I'm gonna revert the code back to where we left off, and uh, I will see you in just a minute. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We can continue now. And so another thing I noticed here and uh, I wanted to show you guys is I, I put a <laughs> messing around with this. So what I found is that this whole pick repaint thing here is where everything's happening. So if you look at the main loop here, if you look at the main loop here where it calls the timer tick, um, we put on our stop points so it it stops on the pick repaint here and if we hit f5 to run again and hit f5 to run again and so if i just hold f5 down and the program keeps running it never actually goes to the timer i'm not sure why it's not using the timer it isn't and so i guess we can um <laughs> we can leave that out for right now so yeah because it's it's still see it's still redrawing and everything it's just it's automatically every time we you know what's happening is every time we we f flip this and we change this it uh queues up another repaint event to that's going to happen shortly after that and so this whole business with the timer is actually not necessary right now and so we're going to leave it out and so what i wanted to do though is i wanted to see how fast this thing is running and stuff and I want we do need to be able to track how many ticks uh, we're gonna run so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a variable here long uh, tick count and equals zero why not and we're gonna go plus plus so each time we come through and then we're gonna go text equals tick count uh, dot to string yes okay so now when we go through it should yeah see it's gonna tell us up here this numbers zooming through that is really fast too it's doing like a hundred frames a second isn't it okay because we're probably not gonna want to do that many frames on our little algorithm that we're gonna do but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an iterative uh, loop and what's called a cell cellular automaton and so i'm going to tell you what that is here real quick um i'll describe it fairly crudely so a cellular automaton is basically a whole array of what are called cells each cell has behavior uh it has rules and either one rule or whatever you can basically it's only limited by your imagination but each cell behaves in the same way as all the other cells and so each tick through your loop or whatever you want to call it however you want to describe it each tick of the clock the cell performs you know it's one it does its thing and each cell does their thing and so 
they basically interact with each other based on their other, you know, the other cells, uh, the, you know, the status of their neighbors. And so like, say this is our cell here, and these are the eight neighbors that it has in this case, because we're just laying them out on a square grid. And so this one, uh, in this case, what we're going to do, our behavior is going to be based on uh, count. We're going to count how many neighbors are on or true. And, you know, so basically you can have zero neighbors through eight neighbors that are true. And based on that, this neighbor or this cell is either going to set itself to on or off. And so each cell in the entire grid is going to do that every single time through. And uh, this is based on a... Uh, probably the most famous and maybe the only famous uh, cellular automaton is called Conway's Game of Life. And there's a specific set of rules for that, like the number of cells that you use to turn on and off and stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a Boolean, um, let me see, we're going to call it rule and equals new bool. And so we're going to have was we're going to have 10 different um, conditions. So basically, you can have 10 different conditions as far as, uh, you know, a cell is concerned. So the cell itself can be on or off. So that's two. And then you can also have zero through nine of the neighbors or zero through eight of the neighbors, which is a total of nine different statuses there. Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to set, let me see, is that going to be, that's going to be 10 comma 2, I think we're going to want to do. So we're going to want to do a two-dimensional array. And so what our array is going to look like is that on this dimension, it's going to be whether the thing is on or off, and then this is going to be our, and actually we only need nine there, don't we? And that's going to be our count. So if self is on, then we're going to do rule, you know, um, why don't we do this the other way? There we go. So if self is on, we're going to do rule um, zero and then what, however many the number is in our grid. And then if self is off, then we're going to do rule however many is in the grid is, is our sum. And so each time we go through this, what we want to do is we're going to make a uh, void tick and this is going to be our we can call it cell tick this is going to be our behavior for and let's move this down to let's move this thing out of the way because we don't want it here let's just move it down to the bottom here and so yeah what we're going to do is each tick we're going to run this and so we're going to do this we're going to go cell tick whoops so every time the the screen refreshes we're going to have this we're going to have this uh run and so what we're going to do is we're going to go um and the thing is we don't want to do the very outside edges of this we're just going to leave those alone so what we're going to do is we're going to go for int i equals one and i is less than uh, what was our max size, right? Max size minus one and I plus plus. And we're gonna do the same thing with J. So we're gonna copy and paste that in here. And we're gonna go J equals one. I'll show you why we're doing not the edges. So the cell we're gonna look at is going to be uh, block I comma J right and so it's neighbor to the left not dot comma it's neighbor to the left is gonna be I minus one and so if we start at zero then we're gonna try to look at you know number negative one and I don't want to mess around with I mean we can make it wrap around if you want to you can make it wrap around so that when in the one on the ones on the left column look at the stuff on the right column um, I don't want to do that right now because we're, we're just going <laughs> to, we're just going to, um, um, you know, make our simple little maze. We don't need to do anything more complicated than that. So we're going to start with our sum, 
So we're gonna go uh, int temporary sum. I usually put a T on a lot of variables if I'm just using a small little thing here. And we're gonna go equals zero. So our sum is starting at zero. And then let me see that we wanna put that in here actually. We're gonna put that for each cell. We're gonna count up a sum. And so our sum is zero. And then we're gonna go if, and then for each neighbor, we're gonna go if this block is on, whoops, what did I just do? I hit page up, page down. <laughs> and then we're gonna go T sum plus plus. So we're gonna count up for each time, for each neighbor that's on. And let me go like this, let me get rid of these, minus one and plus ones. And we're gonna go like this. And that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is gonna be number one, neighbor one, and then neighbor two is gonna be I, and then J minus one, right? And I think we'll even get the spacing out here. Why don't we do that, actually? Let's get the spacing set up here so that we can more easily, it's just easier visually to do it this way. So that's three, four, five. Ah, uh, did it just take out the spaces? Yeah, it did. <laughs> okay, apparently it's not gonna let us do it the lazy way. Okay, so this is gonna be J minus one. This is also gonna be J minus one. And we're gonna hit the insert key so we can just type over here. Minus one, and then this is gonna be I plus one, right? There we go. And now we can go like, this it's not gonna it isn't gonna let us is it okay all right and then number four is gonna be i minus one and then j that's fine number five is gonna be i plus one and j number six seven and eight are all gonna be j plus one so we can put those in there And then we can go I minus one here, and then I, and then I plus one. So we have minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. Okay, and then that's gonna be our sum. So now we have the number of neighbors that are on okay and we also want to look at our own status we want to consider that and the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a buffer a back buffer to put this in it's kind of like with our drawing so because if we change this one's status based on all these then when we get to this cell that one is going to be looking at this one's new status and not its old status. And so it's gonna mess things up because things are basically the, um, the changes or the behavior is going to travel in a diagonally down to the right. And I mean, we can even do that to show you, <laughs> to show you what would happen, but I think you get the idea. Um, if you wanna do that, you can try it. You can try not uh, copying it into the back buffer, but we're gonna call, we're gonna do, um, buffer, let's see, bool, there we go, buffer equals new, oh, you know what, we're just going to leave that, and we're going to initialize that when we first come up, where do we first initialize this one here, where is our rule, there we go, so we're going to go buffer equals new bool. Okay, so now we're gonna go, um, we have the number of neighbors that are on and we have our self status. So if block, nope, that's not what I was looking for. If block i comma j, okay, so if our self is on, then we want to um, basically go buffer i comma j. 
So our new status in the buffer is going to be set to rule T sum. And nope, it's going to be rule zero comma T sum. Okay, so rule zero is when we're on, I guess. <laughs> we're going to have to decide that, right? And then rule one is when we're off. And we can actually just make this, since we're only going to be doing this single line, we can do an if statement like this. It's just a little bit visually simpler to me anyway, else. And then we're going to go like this. We're going to copy this and we're going to say equals rule one comma t sum. Okay, and so we're going to look up in our rule set uh, based on all that stuff. And so the other thing that we need to do is we need to initialize our rule set so that we actually have rules that are going to be followed because otherwise everything is going to be turned off and what we're going to have is everything is going to be false. Let's see if it'll execute here if we get any errors. Huh. Okay, so yeah, it's just copying it into the buffer right now. It hasn't actually, that's the other thing we need to do is we need to do this again. Okay, so now everything is in the buffer. Copy it back. So we can go like this and this and we can go block i comma j equals buffer i comma j and i need to look up let me see if we can block dot copy to let me see dot copy to no you can't okay so there for an array you can actually do like this J comma zero. So if this were a, a just a straight d array, like a regular one dimensional array, you can actually just do this and have a cop have it copy everything instead of instead of all of this code. With a two dimensional array, it's not built in to do that. Um, so you can't actually you can't actually do it the the easy way, the lazy way. And I think we're missing a closing bracket. There we go. Okay. So now it's all copied back, and so when we draw it, it should, yeah, see, it's it's basically doing everything because of the rules. It's doing, um, because of the way the rule is set up, it's just, it's just turning everything on. Everything, everything. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to come up with our rules. And so let's go like, I think we'll go up here void uh, set rules and what we're gonna do is we're going to go um, for I equals zero whoops I is less than what is our rule what is that rule dot length just in case we decide to change it for whatever reason. And why does it keep going up if instead of I? <laughs> I plus plus. Why does it keep doing that? It keeps auto inserting. That is weird. Okay. And oh, you know why? Because I'm not doing that. That's why. Because I didn't put an int. Okay. So we're going to do for each rule, we're going to go um, rule i, and we're going to go 0 comma i equals, uh, let me see, r dot next int, right, 2 equals 0. Now remember that returns us a boolean. So you can do that. Um, you can also, let me see, why is this? Oh, because I'm using the wrong brackets. <laughs> syntax, syntax matters. All right, and 
so anyway, this is gonna this is gonna give us our next uh, our our random our boolean. So you can if you want to just uh, for those of you who want practice with um, with functions with setting up functions, this is what you can do is you can set up a function that will return a boolean and you call it um, random bool and then you go like this return r dot next to equals zero and so if you were to do this you now have a function that you can go random bool so when you call this function it goes here and it returns this a boolean value that's what this void and bool and all that stuff is it returns a boolean value so this is going to set it's going to call that it's going to come back and it's going to replace all this with false or true and then it's going to set our rule to be that result and so that's a different way you can do it if you want to keep it that way you can i'm going to take it back out and just have it for me it's just the way i like to organize things it's definitely uh, a preference thing. And so we're gonna do this for rules for zero and we're gonna do it for rules for one. And now when we do this, we should have a random set of rules and it should do something. Let me see. Oh, you know what? Actually, we have to tell it to set the rules first, don't we? <laughs> that actually helps, doesn't it? Okay, so when we initialize our blocks, we're gonna set our rules too. That, that always helps. Now we're going to run it. And what did it not like? I is 9. Okay. So why is that? Oh, you know why? That's because I, that's not the length. The length of a, a two a two-dimensional. Is it like this? Is that how that works? Uh, I'm gonna have to look at that. Rule dot size, I think it's size of or something like that. Yeah, I'm not positive on that. I will have to look that up and I will let you guys know next episode what that is, because we're not gonna mess with that now. We'll just go like this. We're just gonna hard code it to nine. Um, and if we need to change it later, we can. There we go. So now, as you see, it's not necessarily random. Man, it's moving fast. It's moving really fast. And it's not necessarily random. Let me see if we can make this slow down at all. Yeah, I kind of wish we could get the timer to, to, to do this stuff. Um, what we could do is we could have the timer call this thing and it can just draw it a million times. <laughs> But we can get it to slow down. Why don't we go, um, let's see, let's go 200. We'll change the max size. We'll make this slow it down a little bit. And what would that be, 800 by 800? Let's make our, let's go over to our form design and we're gonna make this thing 800 by 800. So we make the form 800 probably make it bigger than that. Let's make it 850 by 850 just so that we have room around it. We're going to go over to this. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to click, click the picture box and we're going to go size is 800, 800. There we go. Now when we run this, it should show the whole thing there. See, we slowed it down a little bit. Okay. And if you really want to be crude and make it slow down, because um, I don't think there's a weight, a very simple, uh, there is a way to make it weight, it's not simple. So what we can do is we can just go like this, uh, long i equals zero, i is less than 10 or 100 million. <laughs> Here, stop and count to 100 million, <laughs> right? Um, int j equals zero. There we go. We're just gonna make it do nothing for, for a hundred million. There. 
So this is what's happening with our thing and each rule set is going to have different sets of behavior. So I will show you, since we are here, I will show you Conway's Game of Life and I will have to see if I have that somewhere. Um, let me see, is that, we're going to go new window, Conway's Game of Life rules. There we go. Okay. And the rules are for any live cell here. So our live cells are are uh, true, right? I think. I think our live cells are true. So what we can do is let's go into set rules. Where did that go? Where did our set? There's our set rules. Okay, so we're gonna we're just basically gonna undo all that stuff. We're gonna go. Um, whoops. We're gonna go like this. Rule zero comma i equals um, any. Why don't we do everything? I think it's all false. And then we can set the ones that we want to to true. And then rule one comma i equals false. And I did a period again here. There we go. And why is it spaced differently? Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, blah blah blah. Let's see. Um, a live cell. So that's gonna be one, right? Is that what we were doing? Yeah. No, we were doing zero for on. Zero, comma, with fewer than two live neighbors dies. Okay, so that is already happening. So any live cells with two or three lives on. Okay, so um, two, equals true and we're gonna go three equals true I mean we could just basically do all of you know put out the whole array to make it easier uh, visually and then we're gonna go live cell with more than three dies okay so that's already taken care of with this and this actually isn't even necessary yeah, it would be. It would be. I was going to say it's not necessary because it's already alive, but we're just going to check it and we're going to do it, overwrite it anyway. And then any del dead cell is going to stay dead unless it has three, exactly three neighbors. So we're going to go like this and we're going to go one comma three equals true. So I think that should do it. Let's see if we get, see if we get, uh, Anything that, that resembles Conway's Game of Life, the visuals, because I've seen it a few times and I don't think this is, <laughs> I don't think this is doing it, but um, yeah, I can, yeah, let me, um, let me stop here and figure it out and, and get this working and make sure that, let's, let's actually just take out the, here, let's take out, uh, these I might have the zero and one reversed, but let's take out the uh, let's make this ten times faster here. That's what I wanted to do, and because yeah, I'm pretty sure that it goes a lot faster than it looks a lot more lively than that, which is why they call it game of life. Where did my mouse cursor go? Mouse cursor disappeared. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. We're gonna go to um. Um, let me see, is my mouse cursor even showing up on here? Have I been doing that this whole time? Let me check this. Let's go properties, capture cursor. Have I been doing that this whole time? That's just wrong. There we go. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't had that cursor on there. That's terrible. You guys should have said something. <laughs> let's see. Let's make sure that this is on there too. Yeah. Okay. All right, 
Cursor capture is on. Tongue twister, apparently. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to try swapping these rules. We're going to swap the one and the zero. And I'm too busy talking to actually to deeply analyze this stuff. And it's just not. Yeah, I'm going to have to stop talking and, and pause things and, and figure out why it's doing this. So give me a second and I'll be right back. <laughs> OK, I looked at the rules and they are they are. So what we did was we decided that on is going to be zero. And so if it's true, we're doing rule zero. And so up here, that's how that's set up. And so, yeah, rule one is if it's dead. And so I'm thinking maybe it's the outside. It's the outside that's doing it. So we're going to try when we initialize our blocks, we're going to go like this. And we're going to go. Um, we're going to go block and then zero comma I equals false. We're going to make all the blocks around the edges dead. And so we're going to go like this and we're going to go um, zero comma. Uh, no, it's going to be max size size minus one. Right. And then we're going to do the same thing, but reversed. So um, I comma zero and then I whoops, I comma max size minus one. So basically everything at on the left edge and the right edge and all the way down and then everything on the top and the bottom. Let's see if this helps maybe. Why is it still showing the ones on the edge changing status? Do you notice that? Did I forget? Uh, did I forget a? No, it's not. So why is everything on the edge still still changing status? That shouldn't be happening, right? Let me see what. Um, because we're copying. Yeah, let me see. Um, let's go. <laughs> let's go into here and we're going to we're going to look, we're going to peek into the data while it's going here. So we're going to go block. Yeah, because the block is 200 by 200. So see these on the edges are all going to be false, right? Let me make this smaller so just so we can see our data. Let's go back, makes new size, max size to be 10 for right now so that we can see our data. I wish there were, that's the one thing that this debug would could probably use as a better display of arrays. So everything is false on the edges. Okay. And let's go all the way to the bottom. Can we go all the way to the bottom? All right. So yeah, same thing down here. Everything, see nine, zero through nine. Everything is false there. Eight, nine is false. Seven, nine is false. See all the zero and the nine are false, right? So everything is, everything is, uh, yeah, why is it, why is it doing that then? Why are these things? <laughs> okay, so we're going to need to go in. I'm going to need to look around. Um, give me a second again. <laughs> this will be why it's completely re-initializing everything every single time. Okay, so if we take that out, now we should be good. So let's go like this. Yeah, see, now it's now it's not. Okay, so we're going to go back to um, what was our, where was our uh, size? We're going to go, let's go 100 by 100, and we'll see what it looks like there. 
There we go. So there is Conway's Game of Life. That is what it looks like. That is cool. And so it eventually ends up um, stuck in a, you know, in a, a constant state. So it basically eventually reaches reaches a low energy state, I guess you would call it. But yeah, so this is basically what uh, a cellular automaton looks like. And it's just kind of cool that how it suddenly, it looks like it's almost died out and then a little bit more, a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so, and you notice the same kind of shapes end up, you know, you get some common things. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to use this type of rule set and we're going to use a randomly generated rules in order to do this. And so we can take this back out and we can leave this commented in. There we go. And we can do this so that when people look at it on the Git, if they want to, they can, they can, uh, there we go. They can do that. Okay, so we're gonna do our randomly set rules and let's see what it does. Okay, and so it depends on your rule set. And so another thing we need to do is we need to do a key, we need to do a keystroke here. We need to detect a keystroke on the screen or this. And let's see, what events do we have? We have, um, we could do mouse click. Is there, is there a key, is there a key press? I think there's a, I think there's a way to set a key um, intercept it. Yeah, there we go, key down. Okay, so we're gonna go um, form key down. Okay, so we're gonna, in the events here, we're gonna set an event. And then when this happens, we can call, uh, we can go if, E dot uh, key code equals keys dot uh, space. So when user user presses the keyboard, I think. Oh, if it equals, there we go. <laughs> and then we're going going to um, set rules. Whoops. So every time, every time we do this, uh, every time we hit the space bar, we're going to set the rules to something different. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have it do this in the set rules thing. So every time it sets the rules, yeah, we could do init blocks. No, I just want to do set rules. I think we're going to do that. We're going to have it. I'm just trying to decide where I want to do this because we want to. We want it to re-randomize all the things, all the uh, block values, and so I'm just trying to decide how I want to do that. Let's see. We can take we can take this stuff out. The new bitmap and the timer equals true because that's not really part of initializing the blocks right so why don't we put that in here in our form initializing instead because we are gonna get the timer working I'm gonna do that next time so instead of setting rules we're gonna do init blocks because that always sets the rules anyway and that'll get all that stuff going so when our key down we're gonna go init blocks and so now when we run this and see, now we've got cool, look at that. That's a cool rule set, isn't it? That is pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Okay. And then I'm, I'm afraid to hit the space bar cause I don't want to lose, lose the set. Um, so yeah, we can do this. And every time you do this, it's going to be a different set of rules. There we go. And so each, each set of rules has its own uh, behaviors. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is so cool. 
<laughs> that is awesome. I just want to look at that for a while. Um, I want to know what the, that set of rules is. That looks really neat. That's really pretty. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is we are going to, when we set the rules, uh, let me see here. Where is that? Where is that? I want to, I want one time to put, I think we'll do it in here. We're going to write the code and we're going to put it up there later. But what we want to do is we want to go um, for int i equals zero. i is less than nine i plus plus and we're gonna basically put all this stuff in the debug window where is that is that there yeah the output window we're gonna put we're gonna print this out so that we can see what the rules are so we're gonna go um, console I believe it's console yeah console dot right line and we're gonna go um, rule uh, alive equals, and then we're going to go uh, s, s, I think. We need, a, we need a string here to do this. So we're going to go string s equals nothing. And we're going to go for j equals zero. j, oh, you know what? That's not what we need to do. We're just going to do this. We're gonna take this back out. We're gonna go through our nine rules and we're gonna go, and it's alarm time. <laughs> we're, we're gonna go uh, S plus equals. I'm trying to decide how I wanna do that. Um, rule, and that's gonna be zero comma I dot to string. There we go. Okay, and we need to put this string outside of this so that we can actually write it. And we can even take this and we can just put it all on the for line so that it's a lot simpler to see. There we go. And then we can go like do the same thing over again. Copy and paste that and take that out because we don't need to re declare it and then we can go rule whoops dead equals that and so what I want to do is I want to I want to run this we're gonna let this continue see now it's gonna it's gonna print all that out okay and you know what we need to do is go like this to string plus comma space there we go Okay, that's much better. Now we'll actually be able to get some some uh, spaces between there. I just want to be able to preserve them. So let's let this run again and hit F11 to run one more line. Sure. Okay, and so there we go. We have our rules. Cool. And we have our rules. All right, I just wanted those. I wanted to keep those. And I'm going to copy paste those into a notepad window here just just so that I have it for later just so that I have it for later because uh, I like that rule set it looked really cool so we're gonna let this run a little bit more and so each time we do this it's going oh that's cool <laughs> and so each time we do this it's gonna show us in the uh, it should oh you know what it's gonna to try to print like a zillion lines in there, isn't it? Yeah, I forgot to take that back out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the, we're gonna put this in the, uh, the, where is it? Can we put it in the set? Yeah, we can put it in the set rules. Okay, so that way it'll display it. Let's do, um, can we do a console clear? Dot clear? Or can you just right click on that? I haven't not actually used the console very much. Yeah, we can clear all. Okay, so now when we do this and we continue running, now when we hit this, see, it's going to show us our new rules. Oh, that's cool too. So that's a good one. 
Now what we could do is I could also just have it only do that, uh, only set, tell us this rule if it's one we want to keep. So why don't we do that for, uh, for uh, practice sake or whatever you want to call it. But we will go like this and we'll go if e.keycode equals keys dot, um, let's go enter, right? So if we hit enter, we want to save it. And we're going to go save this setting display in the console. Okay, so we're going to go like this. And we also probably want to do like a dot right line just for a visual separator um, like this. And we'll say something like we'll set uh, of interest. There we go. Okay. So now it's going to, whoops, it's going to need to put a semicolon on there. When I took COBOL, it was uh, a period. You had to put a period at the end of every line. And my teacher uh, brought that point home because she said, and you know what happens when you miss a period. <laughs> so it's a good way to remember to put stuff at the end of the line. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so now when we do this, when we run this and we find something that's interesting, and let's see, let's, that's kind of cool too. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, and we should probably do like a reset too where it resets without changing the rules. So why don't we do that too? Um, I know this is not like the main feature of the thing, but it's help. it helps for, uh, this is one of the things I like to do is I like to um, just use the debugging environment to figure out how my algorithm, how I want my algorithm to actually work. So why don't we go like this? We're going to go um, if e.keycode equals, uh, we, what do you want to do for, let's do backspace keys dot backspace is there a backspace oh it's just back okay that's right and so what we're gonna do oh I keep doing the, I keep doing the equals for some reason I'm not sure why um, we're gonna go over to here we're gonna initialize blocks because we do want to reset but also we don't want to do the set rules. So what we can do is we can go bool reset rules. And so when we when we call this init blocks thing everywhere, we need to tell it either true or false. So if we tell it false, whoops, why don't we wait and, and write our code in here first? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the value of this if reset rules then we're gonna set, we're gonna do this. We're gonna call this. Otherwise, it's just gonna skip this line and it's gonna just do all of the initialization of the variables, but it's not going to, um, and you know what? We don't need to put these two lines in here. We don't need to do a brand new, a brand new uh, thing every single time, do we? <laughs> right? So yeah, we don't need to set a brand new array every single time. We can take that out of there also. And so why don't I go like that? We're gonna put it before init blocks, otherwise it's gonna to try to fill in this thing when there's nothing there. And so yeah, we're gonna go every time we call init blocks. So if we go like this, find all references, and there we go. So we're gonna go init blocks false, and over here, we're going to go init blocks false, right? Do we want to set? No, we want to do true on these. What am I thinking? We want to do so. And this one is where we want to go init blocks false, right? Because false is whether or not we're actually resetting all of the rules. So we're going to keep the rules. And let's go back up to this one here. We're going to go true. 
So now when we go space, it's going to change the rules and reset everything. Look at that. That was kind of cool. <laughs> and so if we just go like, yeah, see now if we just go backspace, it's going to keep those rules, but it's going to do that. And so then we can, we can just hold down the backspace. Okay. And then if we like the rule set, we can hit enter and it will show us that in the thing. So now what we can do is I can use this. <laughs> this is just cool. I can use this to, uh, to basically look around and see a setup that I want. And I'm probably going to make this, there's one other thing I want to do before we go is I probably want to do, we're going to reset. Do, does it reset the tick count every time we do that? Let me see. I don't think we made it do that. Did we? No, we didn't. Okay. So we want to, Oh man, this is, you can just, you can just spend like hours looking at this stuff. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to reset the tick count. No distractions, no distractions. We want to set the writ, the tick count every time we do this. Yes. We're going to go tick count equals zero. Okay. So that way, every time we do that, every time we do that, uh, it's going to, it's going to uh, reset our ticks. Okay. So now we're going to go, if, why don't we do this? Cause this is going to call that we're going to go if tick count is less than, I don't know. Let's just do 20 iterations. Okay. We're going to do 20 iterations on here and we're just going to see what it looks like after 20 iterations. So see, cause that's what we, that's ultimately our goal is we want, I, you know, I mean, you can spend some time looking at all the cool things and you can change the size and all that stuff. If you want to You're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, our goal here again is to make a maze and do our mini game thing. So we're going to set this back to a block size of 40 maybe. And I think we're going to set W our draw width. We're going to make it like 16. Let's try 16. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. And this is, this is pretty decent right here. Uh, this is pretty close to what I want as far as a maze thing. I want a little bit more white space, but I think you guys get the idea. And so see, you can do this sort of thing. So basically the player is going to have to navigate their way through. Uh, you can't get through there. You can't get through there. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to use this to make a basic generic thing. And then we'll probably have, um, we'll have it double check and make some paths that actually go through as well, just so that there's at least one path that can get from the top to the bottom, you know, so that the player isn't, isn't always beset with some impossible task. So we can do now, if you find one that's almost all black, you can just invert, obviously you can invert to zero for the one and it should do it. But yeah, I think this is the kind of thing. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. I like that. I like that. That's the kind of, that's totally the kind of thing I'm looking for. So we can hit enter to save those. So that's, that's one of our rule sets right there. Okay. And, um, I, we can reformat that too. And I will probably do that next time. I'll make it reformat or I might do that, uh, off cam and show you, but I, I don't want to write co code, a bunch of code off cam and then tell you, look at all the stuff I did. Cause then it's not fun. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for number two. Uh, we will continue on in number three. I'll, I'm probably going to go through a bunch of these and find ones that are interesting. And you're welcome to do the same. If you find any ones that you think are cool, definitely leave a um, definitely leave a note and leave a comment and say which ones you found that were, you thought were cool. Um, whether they're for a rule set for making mazes or if they're just really fun to watch, you know, mesmerizing and stuff. But anyway, that's going to be at number two. For number two, we'll see you guys in number three. Later.